Good morning. How many of you have not met me yet? There's probably a lot of you. It's okay. You're not the only one, all right? My name is Ryan, and if you have met me and I sound a little disconfunction, I've been dealing with a summer cold, and those are never the great things. So if you're dealing with a summer cold, I am praying for you because I'm praying for myself this morning. And what I told people three weeks ago when I spoke is I am very sarcastic. I love humor. I believe God is a God of humor, and he is a God that wants us to have fun in church. So this morning, as I am talking about a serious subject, I want you to know it is okay to have fun in church, all right? So maybe you want to get up and dance a little bit. Preach. Don't shoot me down now, okay? Preach, preach ya. You know, something like that, all right? So we're going to have fun this morning, and I truly believe that the Lord has given me a word for you today. All right, so let's dive in this morning. Before I actually, before I actually want to dive in, let's just take some time to pray and prepare our hearts this morning for the word. The word, this isn't my word, this is God's word, and we're preaching from the living Bible this morning, okay? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word today. Lord, I pray that you have your way in the people's hearts. Holy Spirit, I pray that you go before me right now and to start speaking to people and ministering to people right now as I am praying for them. Jesus, we pray that you just have your way in this service. We pray for just forgiveness right now, a spirit of forgiveness in this place. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way today. In Jesus' name, amen. So, As I just said, we're going to be talking about forgiveness. How many times in your life have you struggled with forgiving someone else? I'm going to put up five hands if I had them this morning, okay? I'm sure that there's sometimes, even in your marriage, you struggle with forgiving your spouse. Don't shoot me down now, okay? If you want to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18 this morning... Uh, Matthew is a great author. He wrote one of the Gospels of Jesus Christ, and we're continuing our parable series today. Uh, And so through a parable, Jesus, he tells us how we should deal with forgiving other people. And maybe you've heard this parable before. Maybe you haven't. It's the parable of the unmerciful servant But I just want to give you some background on this parable. This parable focuses on the meaning of divine forgiveness within the context of human relationships. So we have relationships with each other, right? Do you have a relationship with other people? Yes. Okay. So this focuses on forgiving other people. And it is hard sometimes to forgive other people. Would you say that is correct? It is hard. We're going to get there this morning on why we should forgive other people. Also, the background of this parable is uh, Jesus mostly told this story during a 10-day period between the Jewish New Year to the Day of Atonement. There's a 10-day period in between that. Day of Atonement, you may also understand, is Yom Kippur. For those of you scholars, biblical scholars out there, I'm not one of those, but maybe you are one of those. Maybe that will help you a little bit. And during that 10-day period, the Jewish people, they take time to reflect on forgiving other people. Because that Day of Atonement, they take that day to offer it to God during this time, to offer it to God all their sins and everything. So they truly believe in their religion that you should forgive other people before you should go to God and ask for forgiveness from Him. In Christianity, we think similar like that, but we don't think that you have to forgive other people to get the forgiveness of God. We think that you should forgive other people because we know that it has true freedom when you forgive other people, but we don't always go with the exact Judaism and what they believe. So during that time, it's about the middle of September to the middle of October, and that's when they think Jesus told this parable. So in Matthew chapter 18, in your Bible this morning, let's begin reading with verse 21. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times, Peter asked. No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. 
How many have heard this statement before or read this before? So it's familiar to you this morning, okay? So Peter's thinking here is that he's being very generous. That he's like, oh, we should forgive people seven times. If you've been married for longer than one minute, you know that you've already forgiven your spouse seven times, okay? Can I get a witness up in here, all right? You know, as, as you're married, you think differently. Maybe you've had the perfect marriage. God bless you this morning, okay? But I know marriage can be some work. It can be hard. And you have to show forgiveness in your marriage. Sometimes even when in your boss, when you're, you're mad at your boss, you have to show forgiveness sometimes. Sometimes people will do bad things to you, and you have to show forgiveness. Man, I'm getting preaching this morning already. 70 times 7 equals 490. I'm just kidding. 70 times 7 here, what Jesus is saying is innumerable times we need to forgive others. Uner- un- Ooh, excuse me. Innumerable times. Forgiveness shouldn't, should be granted unendingly. Wow. You mean I not only should forgive people, but I should forgive them unendingly? What if they hurt me one time, two times, three times, four times? As Peter said, seven times. We should constantly forgive people unendingly. And I hope this morning in your heart that you can find forgiveness in your heart for other people, especially the people that have done you wrong. I hope that, and I pray that this morning. We need to give people forgiveness more than they possibly could deserve. Why is that? Because a heavenly father forgives you of the sins that you commit. So if he forgives us of the sins that we commit, then we need to forgive others of the sins that they commit to us. We are so undeserving of grace, but God shows us grace anyways because he loves us. And we should show other people the same amount of grace that God shows us. We'll get to that this morning on why we should. Verse 23, he go, Jesus starts going into this parable. Therefore, the kingdom, of God, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. The New Living Translation, this isn't the NIV, this is the New Living Translation. They used the dollar amount. Well, back in those days and in the Middle East, they don't use dollars. But I love how the... NLT uses dollars because we can relate to millions of dollars. I'm pretty sure that everybody in this room couldn't just start writing a check for $10 million. I pray that right now that you write a $10 million check to the church. Amen? Amen. And if you can do that, that's great. I'm not asking for your money this morning. I'm just saying we can relate to the story, and it's kind of Jesus's dry wit here, if you can see that this morning. Jesus had a dry wit sometimes. And that's why I think Jesus was this awesome guy. And he was a guy that was filled with humor. You may not have seen it all the time in scripture, but I truly believe that Jesus had fun while he was on earth. Because God created humor. God created fun. Again, that's why we want to have fun in church. Don't fall asleep on me now, church. Amen? But a servant normally a servant would not have this much debt. If we had servants today, they really wouldn't be racking up millions of dollars. If you've racked up a million dollars with the bank this morning, God bless you today. Okay, that is some serious debt. And how many know that when you have a debt, it plays a hold on you? It can strangle you down. Again, I received today for anybody that wants to pay off my debt this morning. Amen. That's a joke, church, okay? I told you I'm very sarcastic. But he's teaching here to his disciples in verse 25. He couldn't pay. This is the man. So his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. Not just him, but his wife and his kids. Would that affect you if you had to have your kids also go into slavery because of the debt that you've had? I think so. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him. Sometimes they say compassion for him. And he released him and forgave his debt. Wow. The king had compassion on him and he forgave him of this 
crazy debt that he had, millions of dollars. Wouldn't that be nice sometimes for somebody to come and say, your debt is paid? Wouldn't that be nice? Right? How many want to receive that this morning? I'm going to receive that today, amen? That our debt is paid. And our debt was already paid on the cross this morning. Our debt was already paid. Verse 28. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. So you have millions of dollars to thousands of dollars. Million dollars, that's a lot. Thousand dollars, not so much. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. So this guy's sounding a lot like him, right? Sounding exactly like him. Be patient with me. I will pay it. And actually, it says a few thousand dollars, but in that time, they had denarius, and it was about three-month wage. So if you have your three-month wage, don't you think millions of dollars is a ton of money that you owe, and then just three-month wages? I'm pretty sure the guy should have had grace on, on this guy. If he was shown grace, then he should show grace, right? Ah, we're going somewhere this morning. Pay attention, okay? Verse 30. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. This is just a side note from the story. But so many times we see somebody doing something wrong and we run to the pastor. Oh, pastor, do you know what they did? Huh? How many of you are gossip queens or kings in here this day? Just a side note today. It's none of your business. It's none of the pastor's business. God will make it known. God, your sin will always find you out. The Holy Spirit has a way of delivering you from your sin, and he will always find you out. This is a little side information for you today. You don't need to go run into the pastor for everything somebody did so little, so wrong, Okay? It's none of our business. It's really none of your business. It's that person's business, and they need to get right with the Holy Spirit. Verse 32. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. Debt here can be also used as sin. And if we have sin in our life, which I do, which you do, we all have sin in our life. The Heavenly Father forgives us of the sin, of our, sin in our life if we come to him. If we admit with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. If we admit with our mouths, our sin is washed away clean. And I'm so thankful for that. But this morning, we're talking about forgiveness. And if we are forgiven of our sins, then we need to forgive others of their sin to us. We're going somewhere this morning, church. Strap in, we're going, all right? And I love how Jesus says this in verse 35. He says, That's what my heavenly Father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Hmm, wow. That's some serious stuff. If we don't forgive other people for the wrong that they did to us, it's almost like Jesus is telling us in a parable here, I'm not going to forgive you of your sins. That's what it's saying. That's some strong stuff. Because we grew up, I grew up believing that God's going to forgive me of all my sins. Yay. It is true. But if you have a problem with your brother or sister and you don't deal with it, I sure hope to God that he has mercy on you. And this morning, I promise you, you can find freedom in forgiving others today. By the help of God, he can help you forgive the people that have done wrong to you today. He can. 
and he will if you allow him to this morning. Human forgiveness is crucial for divine mercy. Human forgiveness, that's good. That's good preaching today. Human forgiveness is crucial for divine mercy. If we forfeit to forgive others, we forfeit to accept God's forgiveness by having a bitter, resentful, and unforgiving heart. So today, I want to ask you a question. Have you forgiven everybody that you're supposed to be forgiving this morning? If we forfeit to forgive others, if we don't do it, if we don't forgive others, we forfeit to accept God's forgiveness by having a bitter, resentful, and unforgiving heart. Wow. That's crazy. This parable not only describes a person who did not want to forgive, but also a person who apparently resented the fact that he needed to be forgiven. When the servant confronted the guy who had a debt, there was no way he forgot all about how much he was forgiven. There's no way he forgot about all that. He had to remember it. But the fact is the guy was probably humiliated in the story. He was probably humiliated that the, the king would forgive him that much debt. And so he wanted to humiliate someone else. I like the term, hurting people hurt people. If you hurt other people, it's because you have your own hurt in your life. Today there is freedom, and that freedom only comes from Jesus Christ. If you're dealing with hurt today, if you're dealing with unforgiveness today, find freedom this morning. Sometimes receiving forgiveness from God, it requires humility. It requires admission of guilt. And it requires a willingness to change. Yeah, God, I messed up. Yes, Lord, I know I messed up. Lord, please change me. Help me to never do it again. That's what we have to do when we come to the Lord. And when we want to have forgiveness for other people, or whenever we hurt someone else, we maybe need to go to our brother. We maybe need to go to our sister and ask them to forgive us of our sins to them. Maybe you've hurt someone this morning, and you need to go and ask forgiveness from them today. But most importantly, we must pray. We must pray. And in fact, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us how to pray. And you might know this, the Lord's Prayer this morning. This is then how you should pray. If you want to say it with me, you're more than welcome to. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts, forgive us of our sins, as we also have forgiven our debtors for those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Verse 12, right there. Forgive us our debts. Lord, forgive me of my sins, but Lord, also help me forgive the ones who have sinned against me. Right there in the Lord's Prayer, the whole time. Forgive me of my debts, Lord, but also help me to forgive the people that have done me wrong. And it's hard. It's hard to forgive the people that have done you wrong. But then right after the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says this again in verse 14. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. That's Jesus himself saying that. So if we haven't forgiven other people this morning, I challenge you to get right with God today and to forgive those other people of the wrong that they've done to you this morning. Have you forgiven people that have done wrong to you today? Ephemi is used over 140 times in the Bible. And it's the Greek word that explains God's forgiveness for us. And it's the same word that is used to forgive others. Wow. God's forgiveness for you is a fiamy, And it's the same way we need to forgive others. That abounding forgiveness, that undeserved forgiveness that we don't deserve, we need to give that to other people this morning. Amen? 
Amen. God wants us to forgive others. That's what I'm trying to get a point across to you today. That's some serious forgiveness. But God commands us to forgive. God commands us. He doesn't say it's your choice. He doesn't say, okay, it's your choice to forgive them or not. By the Bible I'm reading, it says God commands us to forgive. Well, what about they did this to me, Pastor Ryan? They did that. God commands us to forgive them. Why? Because he knows how much freedom it is when we can forgive somebody. There's so much freedom when we can say, I forgive you. There's freedom this morning. Can you see that? I'm telling you, the answer is right here. It's in the Bible. If you've been dealing with stuff for 25, 50 years, there is freedom for you this morning. God is a God that wants to restore you and wants you to heal those broken wounds. He wants to heal you this morning. And by doing that, it's a start to forgive other people. I love how C.S. Lewis said this quote. If you don't know who C.S. Lewis was, he was a Christian author. He wrote The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, it's a great book. That's the only one I ever read by him. I'm not a big reader. So there you go. <laughs> to, to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. If you call yourself a Christian this morning, God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. So you need to forgive the inexcusable in everybody else. This is hard stuff this morning. You didn't think you'd come to church dealing with stuff, such stuff. But I'm telling you today, there is a way out. And his name is Jesus. Amen? So will it be easy? No, it won't be easy. You may ask yourself, well, Pastor Ryan, how do I come into this place of forgiveness? Well, I'm glad you asked this morning. How do you come into this place of forgiveness? Number one, forget the past. Forget the past. So many times we love to live in the past. God is a God of the past, but God is also a God of the future and of the time right now. So many times we love to say, well, I'm the way I am because of my past. That's great. I'm glad you're the way you are because of your past, but God sees so much more than your past. God sees so much more than what you had to go through so many years ago. God sees you as a loving daughter, as a loving son, who wants to wrap his arms around you and tell you it's okay. He's here for you today. The Holy Spirit is here moving amongst you. And this might be weird if you're not familiar with that terminology. But God is here today, and he's ready to set people free from the bondage of unforgiveness this morning. You have to forget the past. You can't stay there. It's got to go. Philippians 3, 13 through 14 says, No, dear brothers, this is the Apostle Paul and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Now pretend I'm a track star this morning. I know it's hard to pretend that. Okay? I'm actually pretty fast for a bigger man. I'm just warning you that. Okay? So if you, anybody wants to race for money, okay, we don't gamble in church. I'm just kidding. All right? But just pretend I'm a, I'm a track star, and I'm running that race. If I look behind me, I'm probably going to fall. Right? Anybody ever tried to run looking back? It's not pretty. I've tried it once because I got dared to. It's just not pretty. I fell straight on my face. And that's kind of what Paul is saying here. If you keep looking back into your past, you're never going to look forward to what God has in store for you for the future. And if you're running that track race and you look to your left and to your right, you don't have your eyes focused on Jesus. 
If you're running that track race and you're looking about what everybody else did to you and not about who's the front forward, Jesus, you got it wrong. You got to keep that mindset, keep that eyes focused towards Jesus. He is our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to get to heaven, right? And if our ultimate goal is to get to heaven, we must keep our eyes on Jesus. And so many times for the people that have done us wrong, we keep our eyes behind us or we keep it to our right and to our left. And we don't always focus on the solution of our problem. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Come on, church, get excited this morning. That's good preaching right there. All right. Gosh, I was excited. Maybe I just pumped myself up. All right. When you forgive, you, you in no way change the past, but you sure do change the future. You, you're not going to change the way that somebody hurts you. But I'm telling you today, as I've been saying all morning long, that you can find true freedom this morning, and it will change your future. You have to forget the past and walk in the fullness that God has for you today. Forget it. It's no more. I understand sometimes you're going to be hearing different things and bring it. Stuff's going to be coming back up. But you can either give the enemy a little bit of a, an inch or you can not give it to him at all. I do not receive that today. I've forgotten my past. I live in the true freedom of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah, you can clap. Come on. God is doing something great in here today. We must forget our past. It is crucial to a step of forgiveness to forget our past. And I'm sorry for the people that have hurt you, but it's time to move on. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you had to go through the things you've had to go through. But you are no longer supposed to be living in that past. God has something so much more and greater than you can even comprehend or understand. Today we move forward. Together as a church, we move forward. No longer looking in the past, we move forward today. Amen? Number two this morning, let go of the pain. And all you parents out there with small children, yes, you can sing the song. Let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore. Let it go, let it go. I would seriously be singing a lot better if I didn't have a cold. I'm just telling you that. My wife, she doesn't really like my singing, but I can tell you I have a beautiful voice in my eyes. <laughs> Maybe my ears need checked, but my eyes, I think I have a beautiful voice. But I'll take tips after service if you want to give me some tips today. But it's hard to let go of the pain, amen? It is hard. It's hard to let go of it. It is. It's hard to let go of the pain. The more you forget the past and the more you let go of the pain, the easier it will be to forgive. The easier it will be. I'm not saying it's going to be hard because it's still going to be hard, but it will be easier when you forget the past and let go of the pain. I love how this says about scars and wounds. A difference between a scar and a wound is the difference with people talking about God rather than people talking about people. Can we put that on the screen? Is that not there? It is. Thank you. I'm sorry. A difference between a scar and a wound is a difference with people talking about God rather than talking about people. If you have a wound this morning, you keep talking about what people did to you. That's still an open wound. And you need to get that right with God today. But if you've moved past it, you start talking about how God delivered you through it. And it's now a scar because scars are healed. It might be a new skin that you have on your body, but scars are healed. An open wound, if you keep talking about the people that have hurt you, that's still a wound today. But if you find true forgiveness, you don't keep talking about the person. You talk about what God has delivered you through this morning. And the testimony, by the word of your testimony, you're talking about the Lord, how he has brought you through it. We all have a testimony today. 
1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on him. This is one of my favorite verses of the Bible. Because he cares for you. Some of you haven't talked to the Lord in a long time about forgiveness. And today's a new day. Today is a new day. It says in 1 Peter 5, 7, to cast all our anxiety, all our pain on Jesus because he cares for you. He cares for you today, church. And so many times we only want Jesus to have a little bit of what we're going through. Guess what? Jesus wants the whole thing. He wants all your problems this morning, not just the ones you want to give him. He wants them all today because he wants you to find true freedom this morning. I love that verse. God cares for us. We must let go of the pain. Number three, we have to continue to forgive them. Continue to forgive them. Things are going to pop back up. You might feel like you're in pain from the stuff that has happened. But once you forgive them once, it's a process sometimes. You have to forgive them again and again and again and again. I'm sorry that it's not all going to be taken most of the time. It's not going to all be taken away the first time you forgive them. But it's a process. And you must continue to forgive them. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to give you a story this morning. I have a great dad, a great earthly father. I have a great heavenly father too, but I have a great earthly father. And I have a great relationship to, with him to this day. But when I was a kid, my brother was a great baseball player. And people around the area would come watch him play. And my dad would always brag about my brother and his baseball skills, but he would never brag about me. Never would. I thought I was a decent player. Maybe in my eyes again, I was a decent player. But he wouldn't, he wouldn't brag about me. And when I forgave him the first time, he never knew that I really struggled with that. But when I forgave him the first time, guess what? I had to forgive him again and again and again because stuff kept coming back up. The enemy wants to try and divide you from your family. And if I give that an inch, if I give that a foothold, he's going to use that and warp it for his advantages. But I had to keep forgiving and forgiving, forgiving. Lord, I forgive my dad. It wasn't that big of a deal. You may think, well, I've been through much worse, and I'm sorry you have. But I can just relate to that story on how I had to continue to forgive my father. And I love my dad, have a great relationship with him to this day, but I had to continue to forgive. Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. It's a continual process sometimes. We have to continue to do it. Here's some misconceptions about forgiveness. Forgiveness does not automatically restore a relationship. Forgiveness does not automatically restore a relationship. If you think that when you forgive someone, your relationship's going to instantly be bonded again, check again. It's not instantly going to do that. That's a misconception that sometimes we have when we forgive someone. Another is forgiveness does not require an apology. Now, some of you are crazy enough, and I might be one too, where you go to the person's house and after you forgive them, duh, 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 I demand an apology right now. That's a joke, okay? I'm, I'm just kidding. All right, yeah, you can laugh. But sometimes we think that we, after we forgive someone, we should automatically have an apology right there waiting for us. Like God's going to have an altering time where you get a forgiveness text, an apology text from someone. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time that's not going to happen. I mean, God is God and he can do what he, what he, what he does. And he's a miracle working God. But I'm just being real with you today. More than likely that's not going to happen. So if you forgive someone this morning, don't instantly think you're going to get an apology from them. Just being real with you today. And this is not a misconception, but forgiveness is hard. It is very hard. But I'm telling you this morning, it is easier when we bring God into the picture. So much easier if we bring God into the picture. And I believe the most important thing, I already kind of touched on it, 
to do for forgiveness and forgiving the person is number four. We must pray for the ones who hurt us. We must pray for the ones who hurt us. What? Pastor Ryan, you now want me to forgive him? Now you want me to pray for him? Are you jacked up on Mountain Dew or what? Just cold medicine this morning. There you go. All right? It's just a joke, okay, church? You must continue to pray for the ones who hurt you. As I said before, hurting people hurt people. You have to continue to pray for those that have hurt you in the past. Why? Because they need Jesus just like you need Jesus. And if we pray for them, there may be a breakthrough. Maybe God will alter their life and they won't be looking in the past because hurting people hurt people. Most of the time, they have been hurt in their past. And then they decide to hurt other people. And maybe God gives them a life-altering moment where they are set free from the bondage of unforgiveness. We hope and we pray that that's you today, that you can be set free from the bondage of unforgiveness today. Matthew 5, Jesus says it, just, just points it out to us. That's why I think Jesus is an awesome guy. 5, 43 through 44, and most of you have heard this verse. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Wow, that's some serious stuff here today. We have to pray for the people that have done wrong to us. It's hard. It's hard to put those people in our prayers. I understand it's hard, but these are paths to getting to forgiveness. And when you find true forgiveness, you start praying for the ones that have hurt you. Amen? I love the way Bishop T.D. Jakes says it. We think that forgiveness is weakness, but it's absolutely not. It takes a very strong person to forgive. If you've forgiven this morning, you're a strong person. It takes a strong person to forgive. And I'm going to tell you again, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. God didn't say this life was going to be easy. God didn't say that forgiveness is going to be easy. But it will be easier if you let go of the pain, if you forget the past, if you, sorry, I lost my train of thought, continue to forgive them and you pray for the ones who hurt you. This morning, I just want to close with a video on someone very close to me that struggled with unforgiveness for many years of his life. This, this guy is my brother. He's my actual brother, blood brother. So we grew up in the same room together. And he had so much bitterness and unresentful and unforgiveness in his heart well into his college years. And as his brother that I shared a room with, I never saw it. I never saw it because he hid it so deep down. I knew the stuff that he had struggled with. And he couldn't, ha he couldn't you know, it wasn't his fault. It just happened. It's a thing that happened. But God has truly restored just the way. He has a beautiful redemption story of forgiveness. And I'd just like you to take a, pay attention to this video of my brother Rob. Rob was so interested in life as a boy. He began pulling away and he was so different. He didn't want me touching him. And I said to my husband, something is wrong with Rob. I noticed that we really were fighting a lot. And I guess there was a lot of unforgiveness and bitterness on his end. And I didn't know that till years later. Rob's father has been the executive director of the St. Louis Teen Challenge Home for nearly 40 years and raised his family at the ministry. Teen Challenge is a program that helps teenagers and adults conquer drug and alcohol abuse and other life controlling issues. As a little boy, Rob says a teenager in the program abused him sexually for three days, taking him first to an empty classroom 
and later other locations on the property. It's not something that a four-year-old kid should ever have to go through. And uh, he told me if I told anybody, he was going to kill me. And it just, it just totally just shook me to the core. It led me to a life of heartache and troubles because it really tore apart, you know, my heart. I'm OK, Mom. I'm fine, he would say. And then he would not allow me much touching or ruffle his hair. He wouldn't let me do that. He would pull away. I really couldn't trust people. And when you don't trust people, you don't open up to people. And you don't become vulnerable. And it's one of those things, I think, when you go through abuse, you know, it's hard for you to open up because you feel like you're by yourself on an island. Rob's turning point came in his late teens when his youth pastor asked if anyone would like to share their story while on a missions trip. And I'm just like, God, I am not doing this. And he said, Rob, trust me, this is for your benefit. And I said, OK. I just kind of told the people, and everybody's mouths were just wide open, like in shock. And so I had everybody bow their heads. And I just said, bow your heads. And if anybody has gone through anything similar to what I went through, would you just raise your hand? I felt like half the room raised their hand. And right there, I just felt like I wasn't alone. God said, Rob, you see, you're not by yourself. There's strength in numbers. And, and the more that you share this story, which is really my story, that the more freedom and release that you'll have. He began to open up to me and to us as his parents. And he began to kiss me and then to hug me in front of his friends, which he had not done for a long time. When I learned that he loves me more than I love me, that changed me. I think the only way really to get to be in love with Jesus and to be in love and be in a relationship with him is by reading his word. You're not going to know more about God unless you actually read his word and apply it. You can't just read it. You have to apply it. And there's so many scriptures in there. If I dealt with anger, find a verse about anger. So, And, and every time anger comes up, recite that verse and apply that verse. Rob's life has come full circle. He spent years running from his past, but God restored him and brought him back to Teen Challenge, where he now works, making a difference in the lives of others on their journey of restoration. By praying for them, it changed my heart. It's just so cool to finally be exactly where God, uh, where God wants you to be, especially uh, where you were so hurt as a kid. And if I never learned what true freedom was, there's no way in the entire world that I can even begin to work here at Teen Challenge or minister here at Teen Challenge. God's got a way of restoring people and making their past and really turning it into a real life thing to help other people. That's what God does when he restores people. I really think that it goes back to just being courageous. And, and I think that's probably the one word I, I continue to come back to is, you know, yes, he restores, but also don't be scared, be courageous. Amen. Yeah. So this morning, God has a way of doing stuff. And when you forgive somebody, like my brother Rob, it took him a long time, but he's come full circle. And if he wouldn't have been able to forgive them, he wouldn't be where God has him, has him today. It's a great redemption story of forgiveness, the power of forgiveness. And he's there helping Teen Challenge men every single day because of the power of forgiving other people. If you've been dealing with stuff for a long time and you've had unforgiveness in your heart, today is the day to put the past behind you and to look to the future, and to look to Jesus. You may be asking yourself, well, why did this happen to me? You might be in that why me phase. I don't know. But I do know that God is here, and he's ready to help heal those broken wounds that you have. The Holy Spirit is here 
And he wants you to get this stuff that you've been dealing with for so many years. And he wants to move you forward today. I'm sorry that the things happened to you. I wish it wouldn't have. But they did. And you have to live past that. You have to come into a place of forgiveness. And you have to ask the Lord to help you to forgive that person that did so much wrong to you today. If I can have the prayer workers come up and the altar workers and everybody bow your heads this morning. I truly believe that God is here and he wants to set people free this morning. So this morning, if you've been dealing with unforgiveness in your heart, today is the day to find freedom. Today is the day. Don't wait any longer. Don't let this hold you down. It could be something so great as my brother's story or something so tragic. Or it could be something so little that you've just been holding on to bitterness. Today is a day you find freedom. Don't put it off till tomorrow. This can't wait. It's got to be dealt with today. I'm going to pray and the altars are open. They're going to play a song. And I just want you to go after God so hard this morning. If you need to come down here, get prayed for for forgiveness. For those of you that stay in your seat, please just be praying for the people that are up here, that God does a new work in them. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, that the power of forgiveness will help us live a life of freedom. God, and today I just pray that you have your way amongst your church today, amongst your people. Lord, that they will find it within their hearts to forgive. Because God, in your word, it tells us that that is where true freedom will come from. And Father, I just pray today, Lord, that people stop looking in their past, but they start looking on you, the solution of all of our issues and all of our problems today. Lord, move in this altar call today. In Jesus' name, amen.